April at thedailyrock.com. Tonight I am sitting with James and Noah of Arsis. Um, with you guys being what they would call a technological metal band, like how would you guys categorize what you create? Or would you even bother to categorize it? Glam death? Glam death. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Glam death. Yeah. Okay, so in, in the in this exclusive glam death band, how do you guys put together your sound? I mean, there are moments where you guys just totally switch everything up and go places. Is it just jam out and see what happens? Or? No, I mean it's all like pretty like methodical and thought out. Like I mean, everything makes sense. And in the end, like everybody in the band's pretty much gone to school for music, so it's yeah. Um, you guys first met up in school, is that right? Yeah, uh, the drummer and I uh, started the band. We um, met at Berkeley College Music in Boston. About Ten years ago? Twelve years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. We didn't start the band then, but that's one that. But, Got it. Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's all like very thought out. And, okay. know, every, every, everything is where it is for a reason. So, what brought yeah. you in this direction as far as taking music here? I don't know, it's just the way I write it. I, I guess I never really just kind of. Okay. Yeah, it's what came out. When, I, when you guys are writing lyrics, what inspires you to sit down and write stuff? Hmm. I guess just like uh, life experiences, really. You know, it was always tough that. Uh, yeah, I think people generally, generally, they tend to write um, about what they know or have experienced personally. Mm -hmm. um, Cool. To greater laundry's done. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with the greater degrees of success, so I just, um, you know, just try to write about things that have happened to me and, you know, just life experience, really. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I feel like I can be more sincere that way, and you know, but I try to write things in a way that, that it's abstract enough that people can kind of take their own meanings um, from the lyrics and kind of, you know, hopefully have some personal connection with the song as well. Cool. You guys just got back from Europe, yeah? Yes, we did. How was Europe? It was pretty adventurous. <laughs> what sorts of adventures can you tell us about from uh, from Europe? Um, Rome. Rome. Oh, yeah, Rome was fun. Uh, we, uh, we got to the venue, like, somewhat early. Um, what about... Um, 11 noonish? 11 noonish. Yeah, and like 20 of us wanted to go see the ruins. So we all went as a group. As soon as we got there, though, I had to uh, excuse myself to um, go find a bathroom. And um, it took a little bit longer than I thought it might. But I was just like, well, how hard is it going to be to find a group of like 20 people with long hair and black t shirts on, um, you know, in this tourist trap? But uh, yeah, so I used the bathroom go out. They're not where I had last seen them. And then I turn to go towards the Coliseum and there's just like thousands of people and I'm just like, fuck me. So I wandered around for about, I don't know, five hours <laughs> hoping to see them and then I was just like, yeah, they're not here. So um, took a train back towards the direction of the club. Um, didn't really recognize anything. Didn't have my tour badge nor my passport with me. Uh, went back to the main train terminal uh, found an internet cafe, looked up the information for the club online, and took a taxi to the show. You were missing for seven hours. Yeah, like seven hours a month. <laughs> or a post office. Yeah, or a post office. I think that's my favorite. You woke up in front of a post office? Yeah. <laughs> in Ohio. In Ohio. How did we get to the post office? I don't know. Yeah, or the I wasn't driving. Yeah, the bank, that was, that was a good one. The no. bank, I don't remember the What bank. happened with the bank? Um, <laughs> I think uh, Coey, Coey drove to the bank because oh, okay. he was just wasted, oh. and uh, and that's where we crashed out. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And yeah. where else have you guys woken up the next day? Oh, I've woken up a few places I didn't want to be. <laughs> I can't go into that right now. Right? Okay. Now, on the road, are you guys privy to conducting any sorts of pranks or anything on other band members? <laughs> oh. Um, I don't know, just showing genitals and uh, mooning each other like while they're playing and those kinds of things. I mean, I, I do that. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess a lot of like, dares and a lot of 
um, not cruel pranks per se, but you know, just kind of. Have you ever things. fucked up someone solo by mooning them while they're on stage or anything like that? <laughs> no, on the on the last tour, on the European tour, Seb from The um, uh, Last Felony uh, gave uh, our drummer Mike the um, Silence of the Lambs treatment. <laughs> yeah. Define the... Uh, yeah, there's, there could be a lot to the Silence of the Lambs uh, treatment. Yeah, well, he, he tucked and and then opened his, his, uh, his jacket on mic during our performance, it was pretty funny. What so. songs uh, do you guys like playing more than anything else in the side? What do you look forward to? Oh, wow. I really enjoy playing Forced to Rock Live. I used to really kind of dread that one because despite what a lot of people might think, it's probably on the guitar anyway, probably one of the more difficult songs in the set. Um, just because of how the riffs are. Well, that intro especially. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's some tricky legs and like, but even like the verse riffs and stuff. That it's it's kind of decept deceptively hard. So um, for the first couple tours we played that song, it was kind of like, oh wow, like I actually have to play this every night. But uh, now I really look forward to playing that one live. And of course, like Face My Innocence, I enjoy. Uh, I liked uh, like when we used to play Carnal Ways to recreate the heart. That okay. Was, that was always fun. Yeah. Um, I like uh, sadistic motives behind bereavement letters. Um, Force Rock is, is always always fun. March for the Second, I enjoyed when we left too. Yeah? Yeah. I like that song. So, like, uh, um, the, well, the second half of Diamond for Disease, which we've never played before, um, I, that's, that's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Force to Rock. How is one forced to rock? If one does not wish to rock, why must they rock? Well, because, uh, I don't know. Um, because you don't know anything else, and yeah. I, mean, I guess you're kind of, uh, kind of left with that. You can't do anything else, so you're forced to rock. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cryptic, but yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you can make some sense out of that. Makes sense to us. Where do you Where do you want to keep taking the band? I mean, you guys have been on world tours. You've got. Uh, multiple albums out now, your sound is very well defined, where do you go from here? That's a good question. I guess, I guess, uh, we'll see. I'm not, hmm. well, people that are close to me probably know this pretty well, but I'm not really good at planning things. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of like, just go and see what happens, and whatever happens, just try to deal with it as best I can. So everything's a little bit more abstract then? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have like some clear, like defined goal to where I personally would like. To, I mean, of course, I'd like to be on bigger tours, making more money, blah blah blah. The yeah. things that everybody the wants. Staples. But yeah. But as far as um, you know, like five, ten years or something like that. I, I mean, I have no idea. I've never had an idea. I just kind of gone with it. And, We'll see what happens. Because, I mean, if you don't have uh, any expectations, I mean, you don't get to support it. So, yeah. You can't fail to meet any goals you don't set. Exactly.